You've joined us today for Data-Driven Decision-Making with ArcGIS Business Analyst. And today we'll be introducing to you a new to market product, Business Analyst Web, which now with additions and enhancements specifically for Australian organisations to drive location-based decision-making. And joining us today to discuss Business, business Analyst Web are Yvette Bevis and Jeremy Proctor both part of the solution engineering team here at Esri Australia. Sharing an interest in data visualisation and analytics, they are part of the core team responsible for preparing ArcGIS Business Analyst for the Australian market. And with that, I'm going to hand across to Yvette and Jeremy now. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Laura, and hello, everyone. We're very excited to talk about the ArcGIS Business Analyst web app today in this webinar. We have noticed an increase in client requests for the ArcGIS Business Analyst capabilities, which has resulted in a recent initiative to localise the product for Australian audiences. Today we are going to show you how you can leverage ArcGIS Business Analyst web app for data-driven decision making. The ArcGIS Business Analyst web app is available through ArcGIS Online. It is a geo-enabled system that helps organisations apply location analytics and market insights to make smarter planning and site selection decisions. It provides data, maps, reports, infographics and analysis tools that let users research market potential, evaluate and compare site candidates, analyse competition and share market research. We're excited to see how our clients will use this product in the near future. Now, Yvette, how do you see organisations get the most value out of Business Analyst Web? Well, we already have our global clients using it and they have proven that ArcGIS Business Analyst adds value to a variety of use cases. We've seen it being beneficial in applying data-driven analysis to select sites that are most likely to generate profitable businesses. Or even if you're in local government and you need to select the best sites for community facilities, for example. It is handy if you need to quickly access valuable intelligence about sites, trade areas and markets while you're out and about. It offers a convenient way of accessing ready to use data, and in our case, ABS data, to understand market characteristics, needs and behaviours. It can be advantageous in locating untapped customers and markets to uncover opportunities to grow and expand. And it is helpful when sharing the results of your market research through visually compelling presentation ready materials. A question that we get a lot is if Business Analyst Web is only applicable for commercial companies. And the answer is definitely no. It really is applicable to a wide range of industries. It is true that Business Analyst is grounded in the commercial sector, where it is often used by commercial real estate firms to research properties, locate profitable investment opportunities, and even present their recommendations to clients. And we have seen it being used extensively by retailers to find the best sites to open new stores, evaluate store performance, assess demand for products, as well as researching the competition. However, Business Analyst is growing in popularity in other sectors, for example, in economic development agencies who want to highlight opportunities in their community, encourage new development and attract businesses to areas. In manufacturing companies that need location-based insight to support operation planning, forecasting, as well as risk management. And even a local government who need to plan for demographic trends, understand the impacts of policy decisions, understand money and resource allocation, as well as looking at site selection for government facilities. So as you can see, definitely not restricted to the commercial, um, the commercial organizations. It is, in my opinion, valuable to any organization who uses location data. So we've looked at the what, the why, and we've just covered the who. Now let's take a deep dive into how business analyst capabilities can be used for data-driven decision-making. Sites are the starting point for any analysis in Business Analyst Web. Sites can be created from addresses in Excel or CSV files, or they can be added directly to the project from ArcGIS Online. They can also be manually defined in the project using either the address search functionality or by simply dropping a map pin. 
Sites don't necessarily need to be point locations though. Polygon boundaries can also be assigned as well. Sites are analysed in terms of an area of interest around each point called a trade area. This can be standard buffer rings or driving and walking time. Data can be imported from ArcGIS Online. In this project, an analyst wants to add the location of existing restaurants and competitors in order to identify the most suitable site for a new fast food outlet. The existing restaurants and competitors already exist as layers in ArcGIS Online and can therefore be brought in using the import data option. Defining sites is usually the first step in a business analyst workflow. Now let's jump into some data exploration. A key capability of Business Analyst Web is being able to quickly create maps and explore data. And one of the exciting recent product enhancements in Australia is the inclusion of 859 ABS variables from the 2016 census. Now, using that same use case that Jeremy described earlier, let's imagine that the analyst wants to explore the demographics of the potential sites. So they first decide to explore the color-coded maps feature, which enables them to map out any of the variables available in the data browser. In this case, they choose to map the population variable, which is immediately visualized on the map with pop-ups enabled. Now, the symbology can be adjusted and the data explored at different statistical area levels or at any ge uh, geographic level. Because ArcGIS Business Analyst Web is designed for non-GIS users, the ability to create maps is more streamlined and easy to understand. Now, the analyst chooses to use the Smart Map Search, which enables him to choose multiple variables and visualize the area that match the chosen criteria. In this case, the analyst chose an out-of-the-box variable, as well as those custom variables that we see now. Now, these custom variables are created by the user and are created by combining out-of-the-box variables and can be shared with the whole organization. The smart map search allows users to dynamically adjust the variable ranges with the map updating immediately to reflect their selection. Now, a quick side note on those grayed out business and facility search option that some of you uh, may have picked up on. Now, this functionality is unfortunately not yet available in Australia, and that's why it is grayed out. It has nothing to do with the license. Now, a distinguishing feature of Business Analyst Web is that ready to use local content that we just saw. Business Analyst Web for Australia includes data from Michael Bauer Research, as well as the previously mentioned ABS census variables. This local content will be available under the standard data tab in the data browser. But not only can you access this ready to use content, you can also add your own data um, and have that appear in the data browser for your users. Advanced users can set up custom data sets for the organization, which will appear under the My Data or the Data Shared With Me tab, depending on um, who creates the data and, and what user they are. Now, this is really powerful because it allows users to consume standard and custom variables side by side. And both these standard and custom variables can be used as data sources for one of my favorite features, which are infographics. Business Analyst Web includes out-of-the-box infographics based on the ABS data variables. These interactive graphics are self-contained summaries of useful information on a topic and can be generated for individual sites. Here, the analyst uses the infographics to get a better idea of the demographic information for each trade area. Understanding the demographics of an area is important for site selection and for quickly scoping out areas of interest. Infographics can be viewed in the project or exported as a PFD, PDF, or other format. There are several templates for Australia included with Business Analyst Web, and these are immediately available to all users in your organization. On a side note, it is also possible to bulk generate infographics for multiple sites. The Business Analyst Web app includes a side-by-side -side comparison mode. There are two main use cases where this capability can be applied. The first use case is for multiple rings and drive time buffer comparisons, where you can use side-by-side -side comparison infographics to visualize and examine the differences for ring and drive time buffers around the site. The second use case is comparing your site against a market or other area. Neighboring and intersecting ge geographic areas 
can be added to your side-by-side -side comparison infographic. Because this comparison provides context, better information is available about the values and key indicators for your site. Now, if these out-of-the-box templates don't quite meet your requirements, then good news, you can actually build your own templates to create custom data visualizations. The Infographic Builder in Business Analyst allows you to style all infographic components to make them more engaging and dynamic. Users can build up infographics from scratch by selecting and configuring relevant elements, or they can even add and modify elements from existing templates. This means that you can start with any of the out-of-the-box templates that comes with the, the app and modify them to suit your needs. And we have an example of just that. Here we've got a custom template that has been created using a custom data source. So a recent COVID vaccination feature layer was configured as a custom data source in an ArcGIS Business Analyst web project. And this unique infographic template was created to use this live feature layer. How cool is that? Now, the analyst from earlier has a really good understanding of the demographic information for each site because they've used the data exploration tools and they have run a few infographics for those sites. Now they wanna answer an important question. And that question is, which site is most suitable? So the analyst follows a guided workflow to firstly define the site to analyze. The next step is to specify the criteria to evaluate which site is more suitable. In this case, a combination of out of the box and custom variables are selected as the input information into the analysis. Now, as a reminder, custom variables are set up by the user and they're usually a combination or subset of those out of the box variables. This analyst is also interested in understanding how existing competitors would influence the suitability. So that competitor feature layer is selected as part of the workflow. A suitability score is immediately calculated and displayed for each SAT with scores closer to one indicating higher suitability. The sites are also color coded accordingly. Now, the criteria parameters can be changed to define how they impact suitability. So that influence parameter can be positive, indicating a higher value is more suitable, inverse, where less is more suitable, or ideal, where the user specified a desired value. As soon as these criteria are defined, they are assigned an equal weighting, which indicates the degree of importance in the suitability. This weighting can be changed by the user as we just saw. This dynamic nature of site suitability means that the analyst can immediately see which site is most suitable and they can even change the criteria to explore how the suitability is impacted. But site suitability is not the only analytical tool available. Isn't that right, Jeremy? Yes, that's right. So we also have void analysis. In this case, the analyst wants to compare a potential area to an area where there is an existing franchise restaurant that is proven to perform well. With void analysis, you can analyze a prospective site's trade area to identify gaps in specific businesses and services compared to a similar reference area. The results show the gaps by cuisine. The reference area has four competitors and the analysis area only has two. The gap is therefore negative two because the analysis area has two less. Results can then be exported to different formats, including Excel. Now that we've explored the potential sites and have a good idea of which one is most suitable, we'll now move on to looking at what sharing options are available. Well, the story map sharing option allows you to create and share interactive story maps with your selected sites, along with images, site attributes, reports, and even infographics. The story map can be created and shared directly from within the ArcGIS Business Analyst web project. A wizard-driven workflow will guide the user to select the desired story map template, the sites that they want to include, and define which infographics and reports to include. Once created, the story map can be accessed directly from within ArcGIS Online and normal story map editing and sharing features and capabilities will be applicable. I do love a good story map, but nothing packs a punch quite like a dashboard. Much like the story map workflow, dashboards can be created and shared from ArcGIS Business Analyst web app, Infographics. 
So you may be wondering what the difference is between a dashboard and an infographic. Well, a dashboard is a view of geographic information that displays multiple visualizations on one screen, allowing you to offer a comprehensive view of your data that supports insightful yet fast decision making. Infographics in the Business Analyst web app are a way to visualize key indicators for your site in the form of compelling charts, graphics, tables, images, and text. This sharing workflow combines the best of both worlds, enabling you to select sites and infographic templates to create a dashboard. Both those sharing options that Jeremy just showed us are fantastic ways to share business analyst outputs with your wider organization or even your community. But what if you do, if you, if you want users in the broader organization to have the ability to create sites on the fly? We're introducing the ArcGIS Business Analyst Web App Builder widget. This widget will allow you to view more information about any point or polygon feature on the map by running reports and infographics for it. This point or polygon feature may be part of a web map layer, but the widget also allows the users to define their own new location by placing a map, a map pin or, and by applying rings, drive times, or walk times around it. The widget is configurable, which will allow the creator to define default trade areas as well as the, the infographic templates to be included. So in this example, the widget had been configured to allow users to switch between a selection of infographic templates so they could choose the one that they wanted to run. Now, in a world that's always on the move, flexibility and convenience are often highly sought after. And that's why our GS Business Analyst Web includes a mobile app. The Business Analyst mobile app helps you evaluate sites, trade areas, or neighborhoods on the go. You can tap into a large collection of demographic data, reports, maps whilst on site, you can capture location information in the field, and you can easily share them with your team. The mobile app is available in both iOS and Android devices. The app uses the mobile's location to define a site. The same buffer or drive and walking time options that we saw earlier in the web app are available as well. You can access a mobile friendly version of the included key summary infographic so that you can have a quick snapshot of the area in the palm of your hand. Site information can be edited on the go. The site name, key attributes and notes can be added out in the field. The advantage of using the Business Analyst mobile app is that site inspectors can collect information on the go they don't need to rely on paper-based methods. It is also more efficient as time is not wasted on digitizing and transferring field notes. The mobile app allows multiple photos per site to be captured. The advantage of capturing site information in the field using the mobile app is that no preparation is needed beforehand. Unlike traditional field mobility projects, which require the data model and project to be created and prepared beforehand, the Business Analyst mobile app enables users to capture information quickly and efficiently on the go. If the user has mobile connectivity, the captured data is automatically synced with their Business Analyst app project. The site information captured in the field is then available within the project and all notes and photos are then accessible. Now, I think that this Business Analyst mobile app is definitely one of my favorite features. I know I said that about infographics, but I think it's a tie. And we have seen a lot of other interesting Business Analyst web capabilities today, Jeremy, and you and I have had many discussions over coffee on where we think some of these capabilities can be useful. Yeah, so we only need to turn to recent newsworthy events to find exciting ways in which Business Analysts can add value. For example, it was announced earlier this year that our home state of Queensland would host the 2032 Olympic Games. I think it would be interesting to explore the demographic profile around the chosen venues using the infographics and possibly use site selection to support any remaining site decisions. I love that idea. And going back to current events, what about using it for COVID recovery initiatives? I've seen some really innovative ideas recently around repurposing vacant commercial properties in order to attract people back to the city centres. 
And that really seems like something that could be driven by business analyst site selection capabilities or even infographics. Yeah, that sounds great. Well, with so many ideas on where business analysts can add value, you may be wondering how it's licensed. Well, the short answer is that an app license is it's an app licensed through ArcGIS Online. The business analyst web app license comes in two levels and can be added onto any creator or GIS professional user type. The ArcGIS Business Analyst Web App Standard Edition is designed for users who want to quickly explore data on maps, they want to create custom boundaries, and find sites that meet specific data criteria. Users can also ac access pre-packaged interactive infographics and reports. So here's what you can do with ArcGIS Business Analyst Standard. You can add data to maps in a visually captivating way using the color-coded maps, you can find sites that meet specific criteria using the smart map search. You can download, print, or share analysis insights through reports and infographics. You can create comparison reports and infographics of multiple locations or boundaries. And finally, you can access the ABS and Michael Bauer research variables. Now you can do all of this with the advanced version of the app, plus you'll have the ability to customize infographics and reports, integrate custom data into the data browser, curate web maps and layers for the entire organization to use, share outputs by integrating your, your uh, infographics into dashboards or story maps like we saw earlier, and perform analysis. Additionally, the advanced bundle includes an ArcGIS Pro Basic license plus an ArcGIS Business Analyst Pro extension, which will allow you to work with threshold derived boundaries, uh, create territories, accounting for overlapping areas and realigning districts, and even measuring cannibalization. So in summary, the ArcGIS Business Analyst web app is for users who want to quickly explore data on maps, create custom boundaries, find sites that meet specific data criteria, and share information using infographics and reports. Business Analyst web app is suitable for non-GIS users, and the tools are easy to learn and take only moments to complete. Finally, a bonus feature is the helpful in-app tutorials that we call guided tours which walk users through how to use every tool click by click. We've come to the end of the presentation today, so I've popped a QR code on the screen here, so please reach out if you'd like more information on Business Analyst Web, or if you're interested in a demo or would like to discuss the best licensing model to suit your organization. I'll now hand back to Laura to see what questions have come through. Thank you both. It was so great to finally see um, Business Analyst Web, so um, thanks for showing it today. Um, we have had a few questions come through. If you've been watching intently and haven't had a chance to type it in, um, there's still time, so you can do that in the GoToWebinar panel. Um, but I will um, kick off um, with the first question. So Sam has asked, um, do I need an additional license for the mobile app? Uh, so no, you won't, Sam. Um, your business analyst web license for both standard and advanced will actually include the mobile app, which is great news. Okay, awesome. Um, let's have a look here. So uh, another one has come through um, from John asking, um, does business analyst web use credits? Yeah, I'll take this on. So yes, it does. Um, basically any ArcGIS software that interacts with ArcGIS Online can use credits. Um, that in this in that case, in this case, that includes business analysts. Um, it is something to keep in mind though that some workflows can consume more credits than others. Uh, things like ex for exporting or um, working with infographics, moving them to PDF or dynamic HTML can cost up to 10 credits per export. But on the other hand, it will only cost 10 credits for 1,000 views to run infographics within the BA web app. Okay, cool. Thank you. Um, next question. So um, Anna is asking here, um, will business analysts include the 2021 census data? 
I'll take this one. Uh, at the moment, it is our intention to look at releasing the 2021 census data once it becomes available and once we've had a chance to evaluate it. So there are several factors that will impact the release of that data into business analyst. And those factors are around, you know, what the, the final data looks like, um, the effort required to process it and get it into an appropriate structure to be used in Business Analyst, as well as uh, what Arc the ArcGIS online release schedule is and Esri Inc schedule is, because we need to work quite closely with them to release our data into, it's essentially into ArcGIS online. Okay, um, that's interesting. And actually on that event, so that's the data side. I'm sure that there will be more enhancements and updates to the app itself. How often will those updates happen? So there are two different updates that we, that we think about uh, for business analysts. The first one is around data. Um, so at the moment, the previous answer applies when the, the 2021 data comes out and if it is feasible to release it, we will then process it and then work with Esri Inc to include it in an ArcGIS online update, which is usually when Business Analyst Web gets updated. So generally we will follow the ArcGIS online re release schedule. Before then, um, we might still make a few changes and include some any additional infographic templates that we have designed and that we are happy to release into the product. So there might still be updates um, to infographics before there are updates to data. Okay, makes sense. Um, I see um, a question's come through from Derek um, around credits. So he's asking, does the use of the ABS data consume credits? I'll take this one. Yes, Derek, it does. So like Jeremy explained previously, there are credit charges applicable when using a business analyst. And that is irrespective of whether you're using the Michael Bauer or the, the ABS data, because what you are essentially using is the Jew enrichment service, which is a credit consuming service. Okay, great. Um, um, one has popped up from Steve asking, can business analyst outputs be shared with the public via an ArcGIS hub site? Great question, Steve, and hello, Steve. Um, yes, so what you can do is you can take your, your infographic, um, uh, export it as a dynamic HTML, and then you will be able to add that into an ArcGIS hub um, site. Or you could do what we did earlier where you create a dashboard or a story map and simply embed that in your, your ArcGIS hub site as well. Okay, awesome. Okay, um, another one here from Trevor asking, um, can I access and use the ABS variables in ArcGIS Pro if I have the business analyst extension? Yep, uh, I'll take that one. Yes, you can, as long as you are signed into ArcGIS Online from your ArcGIS Pro project. So once you've done that, you're signed in, you can go to the business analyst settings and set your data source to the ArcGIS Online. You'll see it'll say um, ABS, it'll say standard or ABS. You'll switch it to the ABS data source and then you'll have access to the data. But keep in mind when you do that, uh, the normal credit charges will apply. Okay, excellent. Um, one last question um, as we're running out of time was, can I, oh no, I've asked that one. Um, this last one here, can I define how my data is apportioned when I do a custom data setup? Well, that, that, is a, a, that is a very good question. So yes, when you do a custom data setup um, through the Business Analyst web app, you do have control over that data apportionment method. So you can define if you're going to apportion the, pop, the data based on population, or if you're simply going to rely on the geographic area. And if you choose the population option, 
you don't have to then provide a population data set to do that. It will use the population um, data set that's already part of, of Business Analyst, the one that, that we use or that the, the data set itself uses. So yes, you can do that. Okay, excellent. Well, um, we've come to the end of time. So thank you again, Jeremy and Yvette, for all your work in creating the product and also presenting it today as well. It was great. Um, and thank you to everyone for your um, great questions as well.